Okay, good morning everyone, um, or good evening, wherever you are. Let me know where you are watching from, and yeah, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. I'm going to go through and critique the images that were submitted yesterday. I haven't seen them, uh, it's the same as every month, and if you, if you are new to this experience, I accept one image from 20 different photographers, and it's first in, first serve, they upload those photos and then I critique them here in the group live. So I do it using Photoshop, uh, which means I can use my little little pen and I can draw over images to sort of better explain what I'm referring to and talking about. Um, an image critique is, for me, probably you know one of the most valuable things that you can um, have done because it allows you to see your work through someone else's eyes. I've been, you know, having my work critiqued since I started and it is the best way for you to learn because, and I even mentioned this in our Q&A that we did the other day if you, if you were watching that. Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, we've got Sweden, Philippines, this is fantastic. I love, um, you know, being able to reach so many people in lots of different countries and have you all, all join me in this. Um, but yeah, I was mentioning that um, what was I going to say? I've lost it. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> sidetracked in Garrett's reading comments over there. Um, anyway, it'll come back. I'm sure it will. I'm not going to waste your time this morning. I'm going to jump in and just start critiquing these images. If you can't watch the full live, it is recorded. It does stay in the group. You can go back actually and watch all of the previous critiques. Just use the search bar um, in the group there and you can just type in if you type in uh, what are we, live critique or live image critique. critique or even just critique and my name, you'll get all of those to come up. So you can also find them on my YouTube channel. So you can look me up over there. We, uh, we pop them all into there as well. So I haven't seen these images. I like to um, uh, open them and, and look at them you know, for the first time. So Garrett, what Garrett does is he downloads them all once they're uploaded and then he um, uploads them into Photoshop. I'm on his laptop and um, and then when I come and sit down, I get to see them for the first time. Because it's all about that impact and it's for me, it's where my eye is drawn to first in an image and the first things that I kind of see. So when I'm judging a competition, that's, um, you know, how I've been trained as a judge to sort of look for different things that stand out, different elements you know, and have a look at that creative impact and, and all of those different things. So, because the longer you look at a photograph, the more things you obviously see, but that initial first glance is when you, you recognize um, the key standout things. So that's what I like to do. Alrighty. You ready? I am Let's ready to it. rock and roll. Here we go, first image. So we've got a few people watching. We've got USA, Virginia, Hong Kong, fantastic, Canada. Now, when I look off to the screen, there's a TV behind the camera. So when I'm, you know, I'm, I'm over here looking at the comments, I cannot see who is leaving the comments. All it says is Facebook user because of the program that we use. Uh, if you want me to know who you are, pop your name into the comment or Garrett can read out any questions and things your as well. Your mum's online. She says good morning. Oh, morning mum. <laughs> You're going to learn a lot from this critique. <laughs> uh, we've got Sue Pollard um, from Hong Kong. Hi Sue. Uh, we've got Victoria, Melanie, Natalie, Eva. Fantastic. Good morning everyone. Do you know what? Let's, uh, let's get stuck into this. Alrighty. Okay, so we've got quite a sort of visually, um, I suppose, outstanding image when you think about it because there's a lot going in here and, and I can see that the photographers really tried to, to bring a lot of different elements together to tell a story. And do you know what, when you have um, IVF families that come into your studio, it, they've been through a lot so they often do want to sort of you know, include part of that process, part of the history of, of bringing a, a new family member into their lives um, into a photograph. So it's often really quite special to capture something like this. And you know, you've done actually something really unique that I've not seen before in terms of the use of the, the syringes there. Um, and I really enjoy that background. It, it sort of uses a color palette that's quite subtle and pleasing and then you've got that contrasting orange that really does pop out there. 
The one thing that really does take away from this, and I'm not quite sure why it's been used, is the Hessian background here. Um, the the sort of Hessian that comes down around the, I mean, people call it burlap, all of those different things, but it's not really needed. Uh, I think that it's actually distracting um, and it, as it sort of comes into contact with those syringes, it you know, it creates a sort of a, an inconsistency, I suppose. But um, that's probably the one thing that's really standing out for me here. So I'm, I'm enjoying the placement of those syringes. However, when you do um, use something like this, just be careful not to crop through any of those elements that are part of that storytelling process. So over here, you know, we've just sort of cropped through one in terms of the frame, uh, one of those syringes up there. So be careful with little things like that. Um, I mean, you could potentially fix it because I know you can't go back and reshoot this exact same image. And I'm all about getting it right in camera, but what you could potentially do here is extend that background and then copy one of the, um, the syringes on the inside and sort of place it over there to, to add it back in. That's another way of doing it. But um, you do need to be very careful of that in post-production. Also, I can sort of see here in terms of the direction of that light that it is coming across the baby's face. That looks great. However, you've got two very dark corners here and here on that same side where that light is coming in. So you need to be a bit more consistent with the direction of that light and the sort of vignettes that you add to your image because over here it's much brighter than it is on this side, which from a visual sort of standpoint, uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, the other thing that I'm just going to point out very quickly is just the skin tones of the baby. They're very, very similar to the tone that you've got in the, the wraps and uh, the, the background, the textured background. So you might want to just warm up that skin a little bit. It's a little cool, a little bit magenta there. Uh, looking at the histogram, you can see you know, the, there's lots of information there in those highlights, so you've not overexposed that. There are some darker areas to the image, but um, overall it's, you know, it's been captured really quite well. The placement of the baby off to the, to the right-hand side there with the syringes obviously on the left, so the balance is, is quite even, which is great. But yeah, just when you are adding different elements to an image, I suppose the overall message here for this particular photo is sometimes, you know, it's great to sort of have them there to get the shot, but then start taking away different pieces and get the, get another shot. Because when you take the time to set something like this up, you want it to be perfect. So give yourself options. So take the shot, then look at it and go, do you know what? I'm gonna try it without the Hessian or without the flowers. Try it without the hat because there's so many different things happening here in this photograph. There's so many different elements that the story could be lost. So be careful with that. Less is always more when you are looking at creating, you know, uh, visual pieces that, that really do communicate part of a family story. Alrighty. I close these um, without saving them. So if you're wondering what I'm doing there, Alrighty. So basically what I'm looking at here is it's almost like this, you know, this outdoor garden, this sort of but it also has a bit of an underwater feel. I don't know if it's because of the the, the colour of the blue background yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but it does have a bit it's it's like you're outside in a garden, but you're also um, it's almost sort of got this um, underwater feel to it, which is um, quite nice. So what I'm sort of looking at here is a lot going on in terms of colour and a very rich, vibrant colour palette. Um, and I'm losing the baby. Obviously the baby's in there, but I just feel that my eye is kind of darting all over the image and not really finding that one place to rest. And when you're using a lot of different elements within a photograph, excuse me, within a photograph, what you want to do with those elements is use them in a way that in terms of your composition to draw your eye into that main subject which should be that baby so if you have a look here um, at the color palette we've got 
you know, lots of magentas going on, purples, we've got greens, we've got blues. But then when we come into the baby, the baby's really quite bright in terms of saturation. There's a sort of a lot of sort of yellowy, um, red, orange tones throughout those, the skin there in terms of the shadows. So you do need to be very careful. If you want to make the, the background, um, the, you know, the area around the baby more bright and intense in terms of that color, if you are going to increase saturation um, or contrast, just be careful not to overdo it on on the baby if you want to um, you know avoid that just you know in your layers mask it off the baby so you're not affecting the um, the overall contrast and saturation of the skin so um, the baby let's let's so we've talked a lot about the background um, and all of those different elements there and then the contrast and color but the posing and the position and placement of the baby. So if we have a look at our rule of thirds, we've got that baby somewhat in the center, not quite, so it's slightly off center. If you wanted to, to bring it more into the, the center of that frame, you're probably looking at about that because you've got the top of the baby's head, you know, where those intersecting lines meet, and then obviously the feet over here. But the baby is um, also on somewhat of a slope. So if we get rid of our crop, you can see the baby's, make it, my brush a bit bigger, coming down in a slope like that. So what you want is to rotate that baby a little more so it's not so sloped and it's a little bit more balanced. Um, I can also see here underneath where you've got some supports around the baby that little bit of purple um, wrap I suppose that knit wrap it's not quite covering the the padding that you've got underneath the baby so that white area does really stand out and it is quite distracting so close to the baby and it's not consistent so if it was you know if it was consistently all the way around the baby you know and it's part of the the setup that's fine but it's just this one area here that is quite sort of um, it looks quite untidy so you've got to be careful of all of those different things and what I'm sort of looking at as well is is the perspective is quite off so when you're shooting um, from above like this you can see here that the the camera angle is not quite square on to the baby so if we create a copy layer here and take it into transform um, you can see that the it's going down off into the background like that so you really do want to get that perspective right and have a more sort of square on view to the baby from that above angle it can be very hard when you're shooting quite a large setup like this um, without going up for a wide angle lens so you will get some form of distortion which is what we can see here um, in terms of those flowers on this side of of the nest so just be careful with that uh, if you're shooting from above and you're standing on something above the baby that is that can be extremely dangerous so you're better off shooting with a wider angle lens getting above the baby, becoming nice and square on with that setup, and then fixing that distortion later on in post. You can do it in camera raw, there's many ways to do it, so um, just be mindful of that. The baby looks very comfortable. Um, the baby probably just underneath the, the top half of the, the baby here, underneath those shoulders, if you'd added some more support and brought that baby um, upright a little bit more in terms of lifting the baby baby's shoulders up because it looks like there's some quite a bit of support underneath the baby's bottom here it looks higher in the frame than the than the head and the shoulders so what I like to do is get that bottom down in nice and deep and then have more support underneath the back of the shoulders of the baby to bring the baby up and then that what that does is it brings the baby's face closest to the camera so when I talk a lot about camera angles with different setups I always want to try and get the baby's head closest to the light source and closest to the camera. That's going to allow you to draw the viewer's eye into where you want it to be. So the baby's top half is just getting a little lost down inside that prop, so you want to make sure it's nice and supported underneath the back of the shoulders there. Um, 
the direction of light coming across the baby is, um, you know, is coming from the, the right angle. But what I'm sort of looking at here is the top of the leg, the foot, and the belly and the arm right here are really quite bright. So, and the baby's face in comparison is quite dark. So when I talk about bringing that baby's face up towards the light, adding that support in behind the shoulders will lift that baby up and then more light will hit, a, hit will come across the baby's face. You'll also find that when you when you position that baby's bottom down deeper into sort of props like this, you can then make them look curlier so they're not sort of so spread out because when you're in a round prop like this, um, what you want to do is cuz it's it's obviously a circular prop so you want to make that baby nice and curly and almost into the shape of a ball to fit better in, with inside that prop, if that makes sense. I teach all of this on newbornposing.com in all of my tutorials. I can talk about it here, um, but if you're not sure, go and have a look at some of those videos because there's some great information in there and I you know, explain it all step by step. Alrighty. But you know what I will say before I close this? You know, the different colours that you've got going on here, there's a lot of potential. These beautiful sort of magenta flowers and the purples and the greens and the blues, they all work really well together. Just be careful not to push that saturation and contrast too far um, and bring that baby up closer to that camera in terms of the support and the positioning. And, you know, you could be onto something here. And also, you don't need all of this down here. So I'd get rid of it because it's a little distracting and messy. Alrighty. Oh. And the first thing I'm sort of looking at is this beautiful softness all the way around the baby. And it looks so snug in there. Um, the baby looks really comfortable. Garrett's yawning in the background here. <laughs> <laughs> My coffee hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got uh, quite a few new people watching. Helen Henry's on. Hi, uh, hello. We've got Lizzie with her wine again. Oh, good. I've got water. <laughs> Sue Sterling <laughs> says hi. Love your hair. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> I have to tell you this story. Um, so it, it's so funny. Since I've gone grey, a lot of people have said, "Gosh, you look younger." And then the other day, I was flying back from Perth. <laughs> It absolutely devastated me. The flight attendant was older, and I never game to guess someone's age. Anyway, we're chatting away, and she's, you know, giving me my lunch because it's a five-hour flight. And anyway, she, I mean, I fly a lot, so they know if they've got a frequent flyer on their on their plane. And she was chatting to me, and 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 so forth. And we were talking about long haul flights, you know, when you're going overseas and how it impacts the body and all of that kind of stuff. And we just don't sort of bounce back like we used to when we were younger. Anyway, we had a bit of a laugh and a joke and she said, um, yeah, us, us ladies in our 50s, we really have to start, or we have to stick together and start looking after ourselves. And I went, 50s? Nothing wrong with being 50, but I'm 42. <laughs> I was like, do I look like I'm in my 50s? I was a bit deflated. I thought I was looking young. <laughs> I'm like, is everybody lying to me? <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll go back to what we're here for, which is critiquing images oh, wow. and this beautiful softness Seems all the way around this baby. You don't anyway, look 50, Garrett. I woke Garrett up anyway. <laughs> okay, so I'm absolutely loving this colour palette. Like the beautiful, I mean, this is you know, my favourite thing in terms of those natural soft tones and it's just, it's almost delicious. And the treatment of the background is really lovely. The baby looks comfortable and you've got this gorgeous little red heart here which is just that, that subtle little bit of contrast to create a point of interest which has been done really, really well. So there's a couple of things here that are standing out to me. And that is this bright area right here. And over here, you've got a dark face. So you really do, and, and the baby, you know, doesn't have dark skin. If you look at the back of the hands here, this is where those skin tones on the face should be. This is how bright they should be. To do that, again, like I talked about in the previous image, with a prop like this, you wanna position the baby's bottom 
deeper down inside the prop. It's going to bring the legs up and make that baby appear much curlier. And then you're going to bring those shoulders up a little higher so you can position the head up a bit higher in that prop and that light is going to come across and, and hit the highest point. Um, in terms of the direction of that light there, it's going to come across and hit that highest point um, and light it beautifully. Whereas what we can see here is because this area here is higher in the prop than this area, it's going to be much brighter, if that makes sense. So what you want to do is, is position that baby's bottom down. I mean, I know the baby looks comfortable, but this part of the baby is closest to the camera. And if you have a look at it, it in terms of the size, if I can draw properly here, I'll get my hand working. Oh, it's winter and my fingers are still a little chilly. Okay, so if we have a look there at that, and then we have a look here, this area is much larger than that area. So you want to be really careful with that because um, in, it just it, in terms of the body ratio, it just it doesn't quite make sense. Um, you want to bring that baby's face and upper body up higher and position that body lower. But in terms of the treatment and the way that you've processed it, it's lovely. The, the flooring um, has been handled well. The one thing I will say about that background is just be careful with that vignetting um, and those sort of darker areas. So with that light coming across here, I don't know what type of light source you've used here, um, but you may want to sort of either feather it or direct it a little differently. So if it was natural light and you've got a window over here and you've got all of this light coming in, um, what I would do if it's from the floor to the ceiling is just block it off from the floor up, I don't know, um, a little bit higher than the top of the baby's head and then you're going to be able to direct that light across the top of the prop and it'll hit the highest points if it's natural light. If you are using a softbox, um, and the soft box, I'll use my hand. <laughs> Say this is the baby on the ground and you've got your soft box like this directing that light down. Just lift that soft box up a little bit. So the edge of the soft box, the light is then gonna start to sort of feather and spill off the edge of that soft box across the baby and not be so um, directed down there because the flooring over here and, and obviously this part of the, the um, the fur is you know quite bright and it's not consistent throughout the image so if you're going to um, you know add sort of any extra vignetting it can make the outside of the image quite heavy and dark so you either want to darken this bit down or sort of direct that light a little differently but the color palettes are lovely the treatments lovely and I love that placement of that little heart it's just perfect just sort of a little bit more attention to detail in terms of finger placement as well. So get your safe shot, um, have a look at it and go, you know what, my histogram's telling me that I'm pushing my highlights, if you have a look over here, you know, pretty high, do I need to bring them back? Uh, and that's the thing, when you're photographing anything around a baby that is brighter in tone, uh, or lighter in tone, sorry, compared to the skin, you are going to have to expose for that. So you, that's my rule of thumb. I expose for the brightest part of the image. So if I'm photographing creams, whites, light greys, and they're brighter than skin tone, then I'll expose for that in terms of not overexposing it and always making sure I've got the histogram on the back of my camera up so I can, so I can see where all the information is. But here what we've got is we've got um, some bright highlights in terms of the, the fur, and then we've got quite a sort of heavy, dark, amount of information going on here which is all of this background so you need to have a look at that if it is too dark over here and and you know what you can't sort of sh spread that light any further bring in a reflector and just fill some of those shadows over there so you can see a little bit more of that background okay next image oh and do you know what else um i don't know what it is but our eye reads from left to right. So I often have the baby's head in the top left corner, 
when I'm doing something like this as opposed to um, on the angle that it's it's currently in. It sort of is is slightly um, off balance, if that makes sense. Alrighty. What a beautiful skirt. Beautiful. Oh, the, you know, the styling of this is really lovely. And the necklace and the skirt. And I do love how it's been photographed on this, you know, really dark background. And then you sort of lose the edge of that skirt because what that's done is drawn your eye in to this, you know, this gorgeous mum. So if we have a little bit of a look in here now. You know, she's got gorgeous, like the styling's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The one thing that sort of feels a little awkward here is this arm that's placed across the, the chest there. So whenever you have got a topless mum and you, you want to cover parts of their body but you still want it to have that, um, that sort of, you know, naked look, I suppose, is the simplest way to say it, the... Um, the hand placement has to be very subtle, but they need to look relaxed and it needs to not look so forced. So if I turn side on, um, yeah, go on, why not? And <laughs> while well, well, I grab my, my own breasts. Okay, so if you bring that arm all the way around there and then you've got this arm back here, um, it, it actually feels really uncomfortable. But what it's doing is, because she's got a, because it's not natural, it's not comfortable, you can see the pressure of her hand is actually squishing her breast. So what you want to do is keep everything, I suppose, in its natural shape um, and show, you know, her beautiful round breasts, but cover them in a way that is more natural in terms of arm placement, that's what I'm trying to say. So I would potentially, with this one, because we're sort of also losing the arm and hand down here and amongst all the chul, you know, try different areas to place that hand. So the front arm, to show the belly, maybe bring that arm up and just sort of rest it like this. You're still going to see that gorgeous belly come out from underneath there, but what you'll do is by bringing that elbow up, not having it rest on the breast because that will squish it, but what I get them to do is just kind of bring that arm up and then I go, okay, I want you to hold it there. Now I do not want you to rest that elbow down, but what I want you to do is just relax those fingers and gently um, rest them on top of your arm. That's all I ask them to do. And I keep talking them through the process. If it continues to look awkward, then you get them to change. Even just bringing the hand across their chest like this and having the other hand sort of come just sit on top of the belly. You're going to see the shape of the breast underneath the arm, but you've got to make sure that they don't squish it. Um, and then you're going to see that beautiful belly as well. So it's all about moving their arms as you're posing them into different positions to see where they look comfortable. Uh, because this just looks a little forced and then we're losing that other arm. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful woman and she looks very quite strong with, and proud with the way that she's holding her, her chin and her shoulders. And, and that's, I think that's really quite powerful. So be careful with how you place those hands because they can sort of take away that, that natural sort of strength that she's already got within herself that you can sort of see coming through um, and then as it as the fingers kind of disappear down here you are sort of losing some of that detail so just be careful with that and continually move their arms um, around the shape of their body you tend to get a bit of a feeling when you are photographing someone without you know topless or um, you know without clothes and things like on how comfortable they are in front of the camera so you want to pose them in a way that it looks natural and not forced because I know a lot of, from, from my sort of experience, when you do photograph somebody without clothes on, they're very personal photos. So they're not going to show the world, um, you know, their, their naked photos unless they're 
totally 100% comfortable within their own skin. So just be careful of that. Ask the right questions and how they feel about it because some some people will say, yeah, no worries, but then um, if you don't make them look or feel comfortable, then you know that it, it sort of will come out in, in the photographs is what I'm trying to say. Words and me just don't mix lately. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you are photographing very, very dark hair on a dark background, I can see detail here um, in terms of, I can see the edge of the hair. So, but it is very hard to see. So there's her hair. If you were to print this, um, you'd have to make sure that you're, you're printing it properly and that you're not going to lose her hair into that background so that, you know, it um, doesn't look like she's got any hair. So be careful with that. Usually just another little light, a hair light coming in here or a reflector can really help with that. So um, be careful with that. And then one more thing I want to bring up is if we take it into curves, you can see we've been looking at the, well I've been looking at the histogram over here, but now that we've got our, our curves um, palette up, if you hold that Alt key in and move that slider, you can see, oh, why is that not gonna work for me? Can you even use show clipping? There we go. So now you can see exactly where there's no detail in those blacks and there's pretty much no detail in the hair. So you can see separation, but you don't want to print, if you, you know, when you do print this for your client, you don't want to print a big black blob for her hair. So bring in that hair light or a reflector, like I said, and you will, um, you will keep all of that beautiful detail there. But make sure you've got that histogram up on the back of the camera when you're shooting. Alrighty. <laughs> These little hats are so cute. Okay, beautiful wrapping. Placement of the baby in the frame is lovely. The first thing I saw was this. <laughs> I don't know why, it just draw, drew my eye. And actually, I do know why. It's because all of the lines here, these shadowy lines, drew me into that bit right there. So be careful whenever you've got, whether it's a, a highlight or a shadow or a piece of fabric or whatever it is, oh, and then you've got a line here. This is all leading straight down into this. And it's exactly where my eye landed the minute the photo um, was on my screen. So be, um, when you're looking at it, be careful with that. The, the, the reason that this looks so sort of long here is I'm not entirely sure what lens you've shot this with, but if it was shot with a wide angle lens like a 35, you will get that distortion and it will look like it's somewhat stretched towards the edge of the frame there, make it look and appear bigger. Because if you have a look in the background, you can see that the Flaccati texture is not that long, but down here when it hits the edge of the frame, it's really stretched out. So that's usually the result of shooting with a wide angle lens, like a 35 mil or something like that. So be careful with your lens selection. The baby looks great um, in terms of the, you know, the positioning, the, the posing, the styling. The, the one thing I'll kind of say just in here is be careful with those red tones where those shadows are. So the direction of light is great. Might just need to position that baby's chin up just a little bit higher so you get more light down towards that chin. You can come in uh, and lighten this area and, and reduce some of those red tones around the mouth. Uh, but obviously then you've got to you know, adjust the tone to match so it's nice and consistent throughout the, the, the image. If you are reducing some of those reds, it's gonna go a little gray, so you'll have to warm them back up. But um, I mean, what a beautiful baby. So it just looks a little dark there. And that nose is just a bit too bright. The, the background is great. I mean, that depth of field is lovely. It's created some beautiful separation between the baby and the background. Just a few little things like getting rid of some of these darker bits. So your backgrounds, um, 
not distracting at all so your eye does st sort of stay within the, the front of the image in terms of the subject uh, you could potentially um, you know crop it in and get rid of some of this and blur that out and lighten some of those shadows that'll um, remove that little bit of distraction there so yeah but other than that great job love the color palette the exposure is great Oh my goodness, the hair on this baby. <gasps> How beautiful. Okay. All right. So this baby looks so super comfortable and it's all lovely and soft. Uh, you know, the in terms of the posing with with little outfits like this getting that baby right up into a really squishy bum up pose is not easy because you know that sometimes the outfits can restrict you to get those legs, you know, tucked right up underneath. One thing I'm, because I saw the hair first, then I started to move my eye. So I, you know, my eye went here. Oh, hang on, I need my pen. I'm on the wrong tool. My eye went here, and then I sort of start, then because of this line here, then I start to sort of have a look around the image, and I come up here, and I'm really struggling to see the separation between the top of the hat and the background. So that's something that, um, you know is really kind of standing out for me there then I sort of continued to go around the the outside of the image and I could you know obviously see the outline of the baby there but this area up here if we zoom in um, you can see the the edge there but it is it's quite hard to see it so we've got lots of texture and detail here but it's been blurred and softened that we can't see um, the detail and the texture in the rest of that hat. So when you are softening the background and the edge of the frame or painting in around the background, uh, just mask off the hat there so that you, you're keeping all of that texture and detail because in terms of depth of field, um, I can see you know all this beautiful texture down here, I can see texture up there and you know it's beautiful and sharp here and I've got sharpness here and and so forth but then I lose all of that detail there because it's quite close to the edge of the frame where it seems to have been softened all the way around the other thing that's kind of standing out here for me is just those skin tones there so the direction of the light um, if you have a look at the shadows on the face so there's very little shadow over here and I can see shadow here but I can see you know obviously the lights coming in but the light is coming in and creating a little shadow under the nose as well so the placement of your light in terms of where it's coming in here needs to be coming around so you need to bring that so in, if the baby's positioned here on the posing bag so this is the baby's head if the lights here and you're shooting over there Bring that light around slightly more in front of that baby and in that way you're going to get a, a more sort of um, even consistent skin tone across the baby's face because what I'm seeing here is you know we've got lovely skin tones here with the lights hitting the top of the forehead but then it's sort of looking a little flat as it goes off into those darker areas where the light's not really hitting the baby. So if you bring that light around, it's going to, to light more of that baby's face and then also create more shadows around, you know, the parts of the baby that are going to create more flattering um, um, highlights and, and details in terms of that little face, if that makes sense. So you bring that light around a little bit more because it's just a little soft, a little flat. And when the hat up here is quite bright compared to the rest of the image and that light is coming in on the top there, it's going to um, you know, make it a little too bright and that's where you can start to lose the detail and things like that. Other than that, the only other thing that I was going to touch on is just the the position of the baby within the frame so it's a little too tight in terms of the crop it's quite close to the edge of the frame here and here I just want to give that baby just that little bit more space around it 
Uh, I always aim to have the baby in the bottom two thirds of my image when I'm shooting something like this, so that's great. Garrett, I think we're going to need a charger for the laptop. Oh. Um, but if we just have a quick look here, this is kind of where, if I was shooting this, would have it in the frame with just that little bit more space around the edges there, um, just to give it a bit more room to breathe. And then you you minimize you start to minimise the space that's in front of the baby as well, and create more space behind the baby in terms of that background. So, a couple of little things there. Oh my goodness! Look at that face. Alrighty. Oh, this is beautiful. I love the colours that have been used here the terms of the tones we've got this gorgeous gold hair and then we've got these natural sort of you know autumny tones and the browns going into the background and then you've got the the leaves that are sort of matching the pink on it on her little lips there it's just beautiful there's a few things um, I feel that the crop is just a little tight here across the bottom of the frame and it's sort of just sort of as it cuts through where the wrap comes out, there's quite a heavy, heavy line there across her little body in terms of the contrast with the, the tone of the fabric on her skin. But it sort of just hits that edge of the frame there where it starts to sort of weight your eye down. Thank you. Um, and bring you away from, um, you know, this gorgeous little face up here. So not much, but it could, you know, with a little bit more space here, I would, um, yeah, probably just give it a bit more, more room there because we've got quite a bit of space up here. I mean, and it is all about this beautiful crown, but it just seems cropped a little tight at the bottom of the, of the frame there. The other thing that I'm, I'm so drawn into her eyes, and we can see almost a reflection of what she's looking at, obviously. Um, because they're so glassy, they're just, I mean, she's got the most beautiful coloured eyes. But be very careful with everything that's going on in the background there in terms of um, distraction. So we can see the, um, you know, the, the pupil there, but it's almost competing if you have a look. So we've got the pupil, whoops, a bit too small. Pupil there, but we've got... The photographer there and then we've got a window a window something else and then something else that's bright over there so when you're shooting something like this I suppose you kind of want to have that that light source um, separated from everything else and then all of the other bright elements in the background removed from that space if that makes sense because I'm not quite sure what this is here and then we've got some light coming down and creating some inconsistent um, highlights in the eye so I kind of have a look at those sort of things I'm being really picky here because I mean the image is just gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of like the eye really grabs you but then you you're looking at it and you can see the entire scene which can be really cool if you're trying to tell a story within that reflection <laughs> and you could do it easily with her eyes so the other thing um, is just a few little skin tone things in the shadows here just some of those sort of um, areas where there is a bit of a shadow just be careful of the saturation in those areas but other than that this is beautiful I love the crown um, I mean we've just had um, winter so you know it's such a beautiful beautiful image in terms of the you know the colors I suppose that we've been experiencing here at the moment in Australia beautiful alrighty color palettes lovely here the use of the pink tones works really well together the background, the wrap, the wrap's lovely. Um, just a little untidy here at the top underneath the chin. So you've got this gorgeous face and then all of a sudden you've got like this little messy area here under the, under the chin. Usually that's where the hands pop out but obviously they've been wrapped in here for this little one. So just 
bring that top layer of the wrap up a little higher, tuck it in around the, the bottom of the chin and then it'll be nice and smooth and, and it'll be nice and neat and tidy because you've got that going on because it's a very minimal setup when you think about it. Like we've, you know, it's very clean in terms of, um, you know, a nice smooth background and the same colour palette going on. But when you've got sort of lines going here and here and you've got texture up here and then you've got tassels coming down here, this is just another sort of little um, element that's adding a bit of distraction. All right, baby's face is gorgeous. Um, the focus is beautiful. The, the light source that I can see here again is coming straight down across the baby. It's quite flat. You wanna bring that light around a little more in front there and just sort of feather it off the baby so it's gonna create some beautiful shadows here because what shadows do is, you know, add depth to the photo. They add dimension because you know, photos are, are, you know, they're not like a, you know, 3D. They're not like what we can see here in terms of depth. So you need those shadows to create that depth so that it doesn't look so flat. And um, when you bring that light around and you start to sort of see the direction of it and in terms of where the shadows are, then you can really start to play and, and create um, some beautiful depth within an image. But yeah, other than that, I really don't have much else to say. Possibly give the image a little bit more room to breathe. So we've got, I think this is a 5 by 7 ratio. Yeah, pretty much. Um, if you're looking at, you know, straight out of camera, then I would probably just sort of give it just that bit of space to breathe around. Maybe not that much, but... If I was looking at my, my composition in camera, I'd just give it a bit more room at the top and the bottom so it didn't feel so constrained because when you've got it in a the 5 by 7 ratio like this, um, you know, we've got a lot of space up here not doing anything and little space here and here and down here. So in terms of balance, just even that out a little more in, in terms of the placement of the baby within the frame. But yeah, good job. Two excited people here seeing their file names obviously coming up. Oh, so how do they? Um, oh, because their names are up the top up here. The top there. Ah. Yeah, so Sydney and Jazz are I'm like, how on. can they see which files are coming up? <laughs> holding on tightly, obviously. So it's not a smart day for me today. I've done a few silly things that my husband thought were quite hilarious, but anyway, not bad silly things. I just forgetting things that I shouldn't normally forget but anyway <laughs> alrighty do you know look at the this this baby looks chubby um, it does doesn't it? it looks so curly and chubby you can kind of see the lovely sort of um, cheeks and, and arms here it's all curled up so when I look at something like this I, I think this is a really lovely black and white but when I'm looking at it there's a lot of areas where I can't see detail so which is which is correct when you when you're working with a black background however some of these sort of darker shadows here and around the top of the baby's head and down here they're so dark that they're actually distracting so I'll oh, make my my yep yeah, my pen my brush bigger sorry um, so yeah, just be careful because you can lose parts of it. So obviously we know that this baby is not being held up by um, dad's hands because if they were in this position and if you do it, you can see that there's no real way to support the baby over here where they're laying on something. Um, and you know, we're trying to create that illusion. The are quite distracting. They're sort of, they're not together and they're cut over the baby. Obviously they're holding the baby in place, but you wanna see more of the baby. So you want those thumbs to be in line with the hands. And this is where, you know, when I'm getting the parents to sort of come down to the posing bag or however you're doing this, um, I get them to, to bring their wrists together and then their, their forearms together 
and bring their hands out. And if they tend to kind of do that naturally, that's great, but then I just get them to bring that down when I'm ready to take the shot. Because it's not natural to bring those thumbs down if you try and do that yourself. It is a little awkward. So I get them to keep their thumbs where they're comfortable, and then just when I'm ready to take that shot, I'll get them to bring those thumbs down to the side of their hands. And then that way it's all about the baby and you don't have these, um, you know, large thumbs coming up over the top of the baby there. And don't ever feel bad about getting a parent to move something. You are the, you're the creator of these photographs. You, you have to direct them. They don't know what to do unless you tell them. So um, the only time that I usually have a thumb up like that is if I cannot get those arms to stay put. But then I'll use those thumbs as part of the image, like putting you know, the baby's hand around the thumbs or something like that. Um, you can usually do that. Another thing that I would do here is because you've got this beautiful curly shape in the body um, and you can see we've got an arm that comes down here. Now that leads you into the foot. Then the toe brings you back up into the face, right? And then as your eye starts to come around, it brings you into here. It's almost like this little spiral um, composition, which is what we always aim to do. But the head is going off in a different direction, the face of the baby. So I would just kind of bring that face and the chin down this way. So you've got, you know, eyes, nose and mouth in this direction. Um, turning that little chin down and around this way. Direction of the light is coming um, down across the baby here. I would sort of have it a little softer coming straight down so it was like you were holding that baby in that Simba pose up towards the light. So it just looks a little hot here on the top of the forehead where, where it is kind of coming down and hitting there. And you can see by the shadows over here um, that, that that light is not sort of consistently coming across there. When we are posing babies in you know, whether you're using a posy, uh, like the little bean bags that you put the baby in. Now they can be very deep. So you do, with something like this, you're trying to create the illusion. When you put a baby in something deep like that, the edges of that um, prop or support or whatever, what the posy, if they come up too high, they're going to create shadows around the baby. Now this works when you are compositing for many other different styled images, but with this one, if you are trying to, to you know, simulate that the baby is being held up by the hands, then the light would be falling evenly across the baby. So when you're thinking about a shot like this, you do have to consider the light. So it's not just about the pose and the positioning, it's, it's the light that helps tell the story in terms of creating that illusion, um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Yes. Yeah, and, and you know, looking, we've got lots of detail in those highlights, and um, obviously over here, if we take it back and we have a look at the guide here, because you can see it's not quite hitting the edge there, but you, if you're going to do this and you want that black background, you really do want that background to be black. So you can see that there is detail in that background, and then as I move that slider, you can start to see now where it's really black and we're losing it. So it's just there. So this is where you can see those lines. If you print this image, depending on the printer and how your monitor is calibrated and what you're seeing, you may very well start to see the, the detail that is there in that background in your prints. So always look at those, um, those sort of blacks to make sure that they are really black so that they print black and, um, and you've got detail where you need detail. Alrighty. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip of water. How many people we got watching? Uh, we are up to 108, building hmm. steadily. Um, we're at 54 minutes in. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little wriggle on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at this baby. This is baby's gorgeous. Look at those lips and that hair, my goodness. Um, wow. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna talk about is the wrapping. So the wrap 
around the baby looks quite it looks like the baby was wriggling while you were wrapping it to be honest um and it looks like it's moved a little bit since having that wrap on it can be tricky when you've got one a baby that you know needs to be wrapped to settle and then when they're they're moving and, and stretching or fussing or pushing that wrap becomes loose in areas and um, it can be hard to kind of get it back in so what I like to do with this type of uh, in that situation is that I'll put one wrap on and I'll wrap it in a way that could be something like this in terms of one of my wrapping techniques and then I'll put another wrap around the outside but I'll make that a full body wrap and I'll photograph the baby like that whether it's awake or, or what have you until it's sort of drifting off into that deeper sleep and then I'll slowly start to unwrap or peel off that that extra wrap to reveal the next wrap underneath so that's a great tip when you've got a baby that does need to be wrapped to be comforted and settled so um, because as you can sort of see down here we've got part of the belly popping through we've got a little bit of wrap hanging out down here and it's just sort of um, a bit sort of loose and messy around here we've got one hand coming up and we can see the other hand and arm down here which is fine I mean the baby looks comfortable the baby looks nice and sleepy and the, the face is gorgeous just in terms of that wrap um, you just have to be a little bit more, I suppose, uh, oh, let me rewind. When you're wrapping the baby into a specific type of wrap, it's one thing to know how the wrap has to look. It's another to know where to place your hands to support the baby to keep that wrap in place while you're wrapping them. That just comes with practice. That's all that it is. So every time you wrap a baby, you'll learn a little more about where to support the baby whilst you're you know pulling the the wrap in whatever direction for whatever style so that's that's something that probably needs to be refined a little bit more here uh, if we have a look at the crop it does look a little tight in terms of the bottom of the frame here so we've got you know quite a bit of information over here not doing anything and the same over here so what I would have done in camera is just rotated my camera to make that baby um, not so straight up the center of this file so just for example in a copy layer if you were to rotate that baby just slightly in camera when you're taking the shot because you don't always have to be square onto your light source or anything like that or the wall and I know our mental brain tries to tell us to line things up it's all about your composition and what you see in your camera so it's almost like okay well I've got my setup I've got my light I've got this and I've got that and I've positioned everything right but then when you pick that camera up you've got to forget about all of that and start to look at at the baby's placement within the frame if that makes sense because when you get the light right before you pick up that camera in terms of the direction of it then when you pick up the camera then you start to w look at where that baby needs to be placed within in your composition so it's nice and balanced because when it's straight up and down like this it's very sort of um, it's it's uh, it's very jarring in terms of the balance um, of the composition okay so if we have a little look over here we can see obviously where that light source is coming in there's something dark going on just there in that top corner you can um, you know you can lighten that or you can um, clone it out whatever the one thing that is very very bright here if we have a look over at our histogram where it's hitting the edge of that graph it means that we've overexposed something so if we have a little look here So you can see it's the material in the wrap that is the brightest part of the image where we've lost detail. And then as we come in, let's have a look at what else is really bright. And it's the pillow, um, the wool just off to the left hand side there, and that headband. So really, really bright areas of the photo. The headband is, is gorgeous, but you do have to be careful. This is a baby with darker skin tones. Um, you want to make sure that you're photographing the baby's skin tones the way they should look. So I don't know if this baby was this fair, but um, in the past when I've 
uh, photographed darker skinned babies if I've lightened them too much parents have come back and asked me to darken them because that's not what their skin looks like so it is very different to photographing you know Caucasian skin in terms of getting that skin tone just right you've got to then expose in the opposite direction essentially to get the skin perfect for darker skin babies so I would come in um, because you're going to be bringing your exposure down to do this so you don't need to worry so much about those high highlights but what I would do is come in nice and close to that baby's face not blocking my light and I would fill the frame fill the frame just with the face and then I would have a look at the exposure for that skin tone and then I'd come back keeping that exposure the same making sure you didn't block any of that light and then grab another shot um, and having a look at the skin tones in that sense so it is a little tricky to get that balance right because um, you've got dark hair and a white background so you're essentially photographing you know um, uh, black and white together to get that exposure perfect can be really tricky so I would come in and expose for those skin tones and then come back and look and go right well I'm photographing a cream background I want that to be nice and creamy now it's too dark over here this is where you bring in a reflector and you start to fill some of those shadows to bring the exposure up in those darker areas that you want to be nice and bright it's all about controlling and directing that light but it's again you've got to get that exposure perfect for that skin so also one last thing with this particular image is when you are photographing from above like this if you try elevating the top half of the baby so it's closer to the camera it means you won't have to get all the way over to get that exposure just right in terms of camera angle and perspective so elevate the top half of the baby a bit more and um, and then the bottom half will look smaller and will be further away alrighty oh and skin tones um, you know we've got these beautiful warm skin tones up here and then down here into the feet they're just a little little too pink um, you want to warm those up as well alrighty Hmm. Squish face. Okay, so this is something between a side pose and a taco pose, um, is what I'm looking at. Baby looks comfortable. I love these little toes poking through. The the brightest part of the image is behind the baby, so it just means for me the light is coming in here and lighting this, and not coming in here and lighting this. So the baby's face and the top of the head is the darkest part of the image. So you need to direct that light a little better. Um, so yeah, you would have your soft box coming in and lighting the baby there from a higher perspective, coming down across the baby, but that's in terms of the placement there. That's what I would be looking at. Um, if you know and you can't move your light I don't know if this is natural light or artificial light like I'm not going to make that assumption just rotate the posing bag until where you start to see the shadows on the baby's face so right here it's looking a little little flat in terms of um, of the light the baby's nose is quite bright so you can see that there is some light coming across the the top of the baby it's just not uh, the direction of it and intensity isn't quite right to get um, you know those beautiful shadows that are going to highlight those features alrighty the background here where the light is coming in on this particular part of the wrap it doesn't really need to be there because it's not doing anything if like for me this is this is the photo here and you've got a really smooth background all the way around and then you've just got this little bit of fabric that's kind of poking out so it just doesn't need to be there what I would do with that is take the shot look at it and go hmm no it's not really adding to my photo tuck it in you don't always have to use that fabric to um, you know create a beautiful feature just tuck it in and make it all about that baby because that's what it is it's and because it's so bright it's taking your eye away from the main focus I would also just have a little look at your camera angle because you're a bit too far around you're a bit too far around to the left 
because what we're seeing is a very large top of the baby's head and then a very small part of the face in terms of that camera angle. So just move your body around to maybe a bit, bit more this way so you're shooting in from here as opposed to shooting from here. And then just rotate that camera a little bit more, maybe come down slightly. And that's the thing, we have to remember to not, you know, not just be happy with the shot. Move and get, you know, there's until you're until you're getting those camera angles perfect, move your body and, and continually look at whether you go up, down, or you're tilting your camera, or you're physically moving up or down, or you're physically moving from side to side, or rotating your camera from side to side to get that baby placed perfectly where you want them. I'm always um, mentally sort of visualizing my rule of thirds. So for me, I would have the baby in this particular pose sort of a little more um, through my intersecting lines. And then you can see like as the top of the baby's head here comes down through these lines, it's gonna lead you through the frame. And then I'd have a bit more space over here and less, less material here because that's a quite a large flat surface that's not doing anything, there's nothing there. So that's why we've got to get used to moving, moving our bodies and moving our camera to get that baby perfectly placed. Alrighty, so other, the one last thing, I mean the background's lovely and smooth, we just have a little look in here, there's not a lot of detail um, in that background, and we, I can see just as it's a little hazy there across the fingers, if you have painted over that background uh, to make it nice and smooth and consistent, just be careful, um, you know, that you, you mask it off the, the baby so it's not coming across any areas there. And then just with skin tones, there's a few different skin tones going on here in the baby. So we've got some sort of uh, magentary tones going on down here. Then we've got some pink tones here. We've got some greens and yellows um, kind of happening throughout certain areas. And then we've got some darker sort of um, uh, magentary red tones through here. So keep those skin tones um, nice and consistent. The key is to get that light right. When you get that light around onto that baby, you know, you get your white balance right, you set that. If you're working with artificial light, you get the direction of that light right, you get that exposure right. With a setup like this, I would instantly pick up my camera and go to a third of a stop overexposed to get this shot. And then I'd look at my histogram and go, okay, well, I've got a fair bit of room there to bring those highlights up. And then I would adjust my exposure according. So always look at those different things. but. Post-production, if you don't get that exposure right, it can be very hard to keep those skin tones nice and even and creamy. Alrighty. <laughs> Looks a little bit cheeky. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually really enjoying the composition of this. The baby stands out. You've got a beautiful dark background, you've got a dark chair, and this little one here is just, you know, there's part of the baby that looks, that's almost got this look that's like, yeah, I want my photo taken, and then there's another part that's like, oh, I'm not sure if I want my photo taken. So I do love that sort of, because it makes you feel something about the baby. I actually am connected to it. I think you've done a really great job there. It can be very hard to, to get personality um, expressed like that to capture it. So I think that's great. The composition is, I'm, I'm really digging it. It's slightly, it's slightly off, but it's, it's good. So the one thing I'm always gonna look at is horizon lines. <laughs> Anything that's parallel to, um, to the edge of the frame. So for me, it's just, oopsie, if we have a look down here, it's just slightly off. So I would get that line there perfectly straight on to the edge of the frame, purely because it's quite a strong line. So when you're looking at it, you want it to be, you know, nice and straight because you've got the 
the chair kind of lined up nice and straight, I suppose, with the with the frame. But you know what? Even like, I'm just sort of looking here. Just bear with me for a second. Um, so, no, go back out. I like. Well, do you know what I'm looking at? Is this line here? And this, this, it's almost like it's got that three dimension, like a cube, you know, where you draw like a cube. It, the lines of the chair are making me feel with the edge of the frame, like that it's got that dimension, yeah. which is great. You've used the, the lines really well there in terms of the composition. So yeah, that was just me having a little bit of a play. I love different things. Okay, love the expression. Looking at the highlights in the, the little outfit there, obviously within our histogram over here, you can see that there's detail there. So that's great. It can be very hard to get white perfect. Um, the skin tones, they're just a little, a little off. They're just a little too yellow if we look there um, at those. So you've got nice pink hand over here, but then our, we've got some sort of yellowy greeny hues coming through the skin into those shadowy areas so you just need to be careful of those because this skin tone down here is lovely um, so I'm not quite sure whether there was a different sort of if, if this is window light if there was like trees outside that are where the lights coming through and I, I did a shoot in um, in France and I had the baby placed on these beautiful big um, you know timber panels inside a window frame and there were all these big trees outside but the light coming through was very green off those trees so that's one thing I don't know if that was the case here but that's something to always consider in terms of of those colors that are coming in off the light but yeah I really enjoy this I think you've done a great job that's all I've got to say <laughs> <laughs> oh look at this Oh, instant! I'm, I'm, I really like this. Instantly, though, I kind of want to do that. Yeah. And do you know why? When I look at that now, um, and I'll draw on it, you've got your heart, and now it's lined up with the frame, whereas before it wasn't. And now the baby's head is in the middle of that frame where it should be. And if we bring in our rule of thirds, um, you've now got the baby baby positioned over onto where those intersecting lines are, and then it's curving through the rest of that frame in terms of balance and composition. That's what you wanna look for. Um, but yeah, other than that, this is lovely. I don't really have anything else to sort of say. We've got, you know, and in terms of exposure, this looks perfect. You're going to have some blacks and some of these shadows because it's navy. That makes sense. Um, the the light falling across the baby is is beautiful. However, um, these highlights here and here are much brighter than the baby's face. Whenever I photograph a baby like this this is obviously backlit you want to have the light coming in more from this direction not this direction so wherever that light hits first it's going to be brighter as the light sort of falls off and becomes weaker across the baby which is obviously over here so just position and rotate that light source or rotate or set up your prop um, so that the light is coming in more from this direction and you're still going to get that beautiful back, back light, you're just going to direct it more towards the face. And that's what it's all about because at the moment, the brightest part of the image is here. And this is where you want your eye. So you do have to be very careful with that. But composition and direction of light will change this image drastically um, and if, you, if we go back again to here and you line it up a bit more then have that light coming in from here um, very very different you'll also then start to see more of the shape of the heart on this side as well because the light will be further around 
But yeah, love it. Um, just warm up the skin tones maybe in the hands and feet to match the, the face and it's be perfect. Mm. All right, beautiful pose. Okay, so I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here and say that we had a 35 mil lens on. Is the viewer watching? Can I ask what lens? We will see, I'll keep my eye out. Garrett's going to keep an eye on. So if this is your image, please let us know. You know what? There's so many beautiful 35mm lenses out there. Oh my god, the whole family is watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Husband is so is cool. Right. <laughs> Hello, family. <laughs> From Australia, wherever you are. That's really cool. Um, okay, so beautiful exposure here um, in terms of the skin tone the skin tones you know so creamy and, and lovely I, it's beautiful what I'm looking at is the first thing is the size of the baby's head so if we have a look at this and then down here the bottom is is quite smaller which is what we want to aim for but when you are shooting with a, a wider angle lens and you have to come in to get this composition right, what happens is the closest sort of parts of the image around the edges are going to have some form of distortion. Um, you're going to, ah, oh, this, I don't know where it is, but there's the... The ears. Yeah, the shot. <clears throat> um, you don't see the distortion in, a, in the features until you have something else to compare it to. So... If you do have another lens, try try shooting a session with it or part of the session with that and just having a look at the difference because when it comes to focal length, um, and let me try and explain this as easy as I can. So obviously my eyes are going to be what is capturing the photograph, okay? It's the camera as such. And so imagine my arms are the lens. So you've got a long lens here. And now if I'm taking a photo of you with this long lens, then I'm gonna to have to be further back. And often photographers that do babies wanna be nice and close to their subject, so they prefer that wider angle, which is fine. The thing is, what happens is, as that focal length becomes wider, you have to move closer to your subject. Therefore, you're sort of distorting all of the information in that frame as it changes from one focal length to the next. Garrett and I found this really cool video the other day and we're actually going to create it ourselves downstairs with shooting the same subject with all the different um, focal lengths to show you the difference in, the, in how it affects the image. If you haven't already seen my lens video, it's on YouTube, um, it goes for 52 minutes, it's free, it, goes through all the lenses. I had a guy from Canon. Even if you don't shoot with Canon, that's fine. The information is um, is the same for all different companies, <laughs> the way that lenses are made. So if you watch that video, it explains the different focal lengths. It explains the aperture. It explains so much about what lenses are better suited to different styles and genres of photography. So. Portrait lenses are usually around that 50 mil, and 50 is pretty much what we consider to be how we see it as eyes. There it is. Can you hold that up? Garrett's going to hold a video up. Hold on, I'll try and see if this will work. I don't know <laughs> how good our camera is, but I will. Okay, there it is. So watch this. Watch how he changes. See how his whole head and face change? I like watching the ears. The ears really <laughs> tell me whether what what focal length it is, because when you can't see the ears... And the nose. You're going really wide, yeah. And the eyes. So, do you know what? That's We'll, we'll, we'll do one and we'll put it in the group because I think it's a really cool thing to see. So, this one's not bad, but I can see it because I know what I'm looking for in terms of focal length. Um, I, I just, and I'm not critiquing this image when I'm talking about, you know, lenses and all of that. I'm talking about it in general because I do see a lot of newborn photographers using those wider angles. Um, and, and, and you know what? They work. 
when you when you understand the optic of, optics of the lens and, and how to achieve the best results with them. So j I just want people to be more mindful of, you know, their lens choice in, in certain situations because I can see here because the ears are quite flat there and the nose is quite big um, in, in terms of that distortion like I know what I'm looking for so a lot of people don't see it if they've never seen in, in, you know something to compare it against. Um, so yeah like I said skin tones are beautiful let's have a look here at this histogram because we've got a lot of information that is very close up here to um, the edge of our little graph. So you can see the blanket there, the head bone, headband and the cheek um, are very, very bright in terms of that exposure. So just be careful of that. When you print this particular image, where it's overexposed over here, on white paper, it'll just be white paper because um, there's no information there to print. So you do have to be really careful, just bring, and whilst your exposure is perfect on the baby, you do need to be, bring that exposure back just slightly to make sure that you're not overexposing all of the other elements in the, in the image. Headband placement's lovely, it's gorgeous. It's such a simple um, image. The only other thing that I'm gonna comment on before I move on is just that composition. We've got more information over here than we do behind the baby. So if you had brought the baby over just slightly in terms of your in-camera crop when you're taking that photo and have more information in the background, it just makes more sense because whatever's in front of the baby um, is, is going to become distracting. So create a bit more balance and bring that baby over a little more to that left-hand side. Alrighty. Okay, oh my goodness. I'm pulling this face because it's a gorgeous photo of the dog, but I want to see more of the baby. <laughs> I think this the poor, I mean, like I'm a dog person, but the poor dog is like, what have they done? It was, I was the, I was the baby, you know, I was the only child. What did they bring into this house? <laughs> it's so true. We have a puppy and it, every time poor Ali looks at me, all I see is this look of, why did you do this to me? Because the puppy just terrorizes him. Okay, so it's almost like we've got two photos going on here. We've got a photo of a dog, and then we've got a photo of a baby. They don't go together. So you've got to come back to the drawing board and go, right, how can I make this look like they go together? How can I make the, the baby and the, the dog come together as a, like a family photo as such. So I probably wouldn't have used a prop this high um, for this particular setup. I probably would have used something, and you know what? You've got a pink photo here and then a brown photo here. So I probably would have sort of styled it all within the same color tone to make it gel a little more. Even though obviously this is a baby girl, we've got lots of pinks going on, and you've got this beautiful flooring down here, I probably would have just gone with more of these sort of more caramelly tones and then dressed it with some soft hues of pink in terms of headbands and things like that. Um, styling can make or break an image, so you do have to be um, very selective with the different pieces that you bring together. You've also got, you've got white wrap with a texture with the way that it's been gathered. And then you've got a blanket that's been folded over here and then sort of, you know, it comes down, it's quite distracting. And then you've got some more texture here. Then you've got texture over here with sort of heavy lines coming through it. And then you've got more texture over here. This is also a texture. And then you've got this flat background that's got a line that goes through the back of the image. So there's a lot going on here, which means I'm losing the baby, which was the first thing that I said. So you do have to kind of be, like I said, very selective with your choice of elements that you bring into an image. I probably would have, um, because this is such a beautiful dog, you know, you want to style it for the dog if you are going to bring a dog into a photograph. So having something down a little lower, down here, putting the baby down here, but then facing the dog. So then you've got the dog coming down in this direction and the baby in this direction. Then you can create some connection. 
um, because when the baby's over here and it just looks like it's been placed into the frame but then you've got the dog over here, there's no connection between the two of them in terms of um, placement. So now let me have a little look up here. We've got the, the baby wrapped in a way that um, it sort of looks like it's been wrapped to to comfort it, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, when you, 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 you've got a crying baby, you've just bathed them or dressed them, you just sort of wrap them up to hold them. That's how it looks like it's been wrapped because we've got these little feet coming out over here and they're just kind of sticking out a little disjointed. So when you are wrapping, try wrapping I, what, with my wraps, what I like to do, and you'll see it in my wrapping tutorials. There are nine different wrapping techniques in there and it shows you exactly how to achieve each one step by step. But what I do is I start with the arms, especially if the baby's awake and needs to be comforted. I wrap those arms in so they're nice and secure. And then I bring the legs up and I start to wrap the legs up. So that way, you know, you can make the baby look more compact and you won't have, you know, um, red feet popping out the bottom of that wrap there. So that, that add like a distraction to the photo. And then when you're popping blankets in, things like this in, you've got such a heavy dark shadow here where it's folded that becomes then a leading line. But it's not working for the image, it's almost fighting against the image to take your eye away from those main focal points, which is this beautiful face up here and this beautiful face. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is also the direction of the light. We can see with the catch lights in the dog's eye exactly where that light's coming in from over in this direction. So one thing that um, I always kind of recommend when you're photographing babies is that you have their head closest to the light source. So that's why when I said before we bring the baby down here, you put the baby facing the, the dog, it'll also work in terms of the direction of your light as well. So if you've got the baby this way in a prop and it's just rotating it slightly, you've got the eyes, the mouth, then you're gonna have that light come in and it's gonna fall across that baby beautifully and those shadows will then start to, um, you know, add some depth around those features. And because what we can see here is with that light coming straight up underneath the baby's nose, we're then getting these dark shadows here. We're highlighting the nose and we're starting to see parts of the face that aren't as flattering as other parts of the face. So you want to use that light to really highlight those features um, and not create that ghoul's lighting on the baby there. A lot to take into consideration when you're photographing, you know, an animal and a baby. Uh, like the degree of difficulty here is pretty high. So, <laughs> and I know when, when I'm talking to people who don't photograph babies and they say, Oh, I don't know how you do it. Well, it's, well, yeah, like we're photographing something that's completely unpredictable. Then you throw an animal in there, my, my Lord. Um, it's not easy. So you've got your composition in terms of your styling and the placement here is one area. The direction of the light is another. Um, and then you've got that connection. So when you start to kind of break it down like that, then you go into a setup like this with a bit of a plan and you've already kind of visualized it and, um, and, it, and it, it'll start to really work for you. But you've got a lot of potential going on here, like the focus is great, um, that dog is just gorgeous, it's just a few little things to, well, a, a few, few things that you need to change to sort of get it to, to a point where it's, we're looking at one whole image, not two separate images. All right. Oh. The first thing that comes to mind is cupcake, and now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> like it tea. looks, yeah, it looks like a little cupcake. I love these blue tones. Um, so, and and the baby's posing is is lovely. I can see like the, the there looks to be quite a height difference between where the baby is here and the floor. So that could be the focal length again. So you need to kind of have a look at that. Um, the colors are lovely, but I'm, it's kind of competing with the background. So there's a lot of white going on around the back of the image. So I'm going to do something here that, you know, most people would might go, ah, oh, what is she doing? 
but just to show you how you can draw your eye into that subject a little more in terms of your styling. So let's just create a big brush here and let's go multiply. I'm going to choose one of these sort of blue tones down here. I'll bring it back to about 60%. All right, let's add a mask. Take the opacity back up to 100 and normal. And let's take it off where we don't need it. And this is very quick and rough, people. All right, so now we got a baby. So what do you see first now? You see the baby. I see the background. <laughs> so the brightness of the background is overpowering the subject. So when you're styling something like this and you're using a dark tone and a light tone and the contrast is quite great, be careful that it's not going to overpower, overpower the image because I love the choice here of these colors. It's just all of that background around the baby is taking your eye away from that main subject. So when you're styling, Think about that um, in terms of, um, you know, the, what you choose. Alrighty, the focal length stuff is making my wheels turn. You just <laughs> said the height on the cupcake baby might be a focal issue. Can you elaborate? <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, and this is the thing, like I've been going now for an hour and a half and I'm almost finished, but go and watch that lens video. Seriously, go and watch it because um, it's going to it's yeah it's going to explain a lot for you. I've still got a few more images to go, and I've got a heap of work to do because with the Rise Awards is finishing like literally in minutes. But yes, when you uh, sh so what happens when you shoot with a longer to make it really simple when you shoot with a longer focal length, you flatten features. Okay, so when you come in really close with a wide angle, you you almost, it, it sort of creates more, more distance from the foreground to the background. And then it sort of, it, it warps it in a way. So have a look at that lens video. Um, and what we're gonna do is create something in the studio with all of the different focal lengths that we've got available to us with different scenarios to show you that. Because I think that's only the, the, the only way that people will be able to identify how it affects a photograph, mm. okay? I instantly understood it seeing the mm -hmm. differences. You did it in a workshop once and it worked really well. Yeah, yeah. radio. Um, you know, the direction of the light here is, is lovely. Just be careful um, around here where it is a brighter material and that light's coming in that it's not too bright. Obviously, we've still got detail there in our highlights, but if it is a lot brighter than the um, the face, then you're going to pull your attention and your eye away from that main subject. Like I said, posing's great, um, composition's great. Just um, consider when styling the the contrast in the in the background there and how it can compete for your attention. Okay. Oh, the wrapping here is lovely. The baby looks nice and comfortable. You know, the, the bonnet and the wrap look great. Um, the first thing that really stands out here in terms of the composition, let's change the color of that brush again so we can see it, um, are these things. So you've got, in terms of your composition, you've got very straight lines going and dark lines compared to your color palette throughout the rest of the image. They're coming out um, sort of quite dominant. You've got a flower down here that you've cropped through, but then we've got lines going this way, this way, this way, and this way. And then you've got lines curving around the baby in a circular shape. And then you've got lines here, 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 and here. There's a lot of different elements going on here that make your eye dart around the image and don't just bring you to land into that main focal point. 
So if we have a look over here, um, this is your main focus. This is the shot. This is why the parents come to you, to have their baby photographed. All of these other elements that you place within the frame need to draw your eye to that subject, not, not sort of make you go, well, why is that there? Question, why, why is it in the actual frame? So that's something to consider when you are doing this. The, um, the background, you can eliminate some of these lines. You can, um, you know, you, you could try cloning them out. You can use the patch tool. You can soften them. You know, in the past I've sort of done something similar to this. Like you can patch it out. You can then reduce the, the, the amount of fade that you've got within that patch selection so that that way it's... Um, less dominating within the frame it does it's not it's there but it's it's not as um con you know uh, contrasty making it softer yeah. yeah um but also then you've got a heap of different textures so if we count the amount of textures you've got one uh, this one down here two three four five six seven seven different textures going on within this frame um that's really competing for one baby so keep those textures nice and subtle. Uh, the, the one on the ground here is not necessary. The flowers aren't necessary. The green isn't necessary. Just this baby on, in this prop and on that background with that beautiful pink in the wrap and bonnet would make this image look completely different. And um, it would be beautiful because everything you've got going on over here for the baby is great. It's just everything around it. So be careful of that. Alrighty. <laughs> okay, so first thing, um, oh, we got a blurred out logo, have we? I um, think that must yeah, be a, a, no, Gary, there's no <laughs> watermark there that's been blurred out. That's fine. Okay, so I'm just having a little look here, and the the background seems kind of off. So we've got this flooring with these lines and then it seems a little disjointed down the bottom here like those, the lines aren't quite consi consistent and the perspective is a little off as well. So do be careful of that. These lines are in such a, you know, they're so strong in terms of their diagonal um, that they're just continually making your eyes go down those, those lines. And then you've got a line that comes across the bottom of the screen here. You've got a line here, a line here, obviously another one there. So this is your main subject. I would then do what I just did before with the patch tool. And I would remove these lines and you're going to create a much different image. Just to show you on one side how, and that's very rough. Okay, so when you start to reduce all of the distracting elements, you bring the eye into the baby. And I'm honestly doing this really ridiculously fast. You would be a bit more careful. All right, so now you've got Distraction, baby. So think about that when, you, when you're working on your backgrounds um, and keep it all about that baby because you've gone to such you know, detail in terms of the wrap and the placement and all of that, then you've got this background that's just taking it away. Um, the, the posing of the baby is lovely. The head is just slightly off, just popping a little bit of a support on this side. We'll just bring that face back up towards the... Um, the, the ceiling there. And what I can see here is that the light is coming in um, from this direction, but the chin is pointing down towards the light. So my rule of thumb, if I've got light coming in side on, so here's my light source, if the chin's there, then the light is gonna somewhat come up underneath that nose and across the face. You'll be able to see it for the direction of the shadow from the nose. So what I always try to do is tilt the chin away from the light source. So now that that light is going to come across the brow and the nose and down across the face to create more fluttering shadows. 
So tilting that head or directing that light um, to create better shadows because if we look down here you can see that shadow um, coming and that light coming across here so as the the lip comes up here it's creating this shadow here so they're the things that you need to look for in terms of that head placement but yeah I'm, I love this color palette altogether I think the styling is really nice I don't even mind the wrap sort of you know around the bottom of the baby there I think that looks lovely all right oh this is a big baby okay so I think it was the first couple of images, it feels like yesterday, um, that I talked about them. <laughs> I said to Garrett, we're going to keep this to a short time length today. So when you are working with a prop like this, bury that bottom deep down. The way you line it with your supports, create a little hole in the middle of that prop for that baby's bottom. Um, that's going to make um, the baby look a little curlier and you're going to be able to bring those legs up even more. The styling of this is lovely. The placement, the composition, I love all of that. You just have to be very, very careful with that posing. Try wrapping that baby um, a little tighter because I can see that the wrap does come around the outside but it looks like he's just going, yep, I'm out of here and stretched and got himself comfortable. So to create that nice circular shape, he looks like he's laying flat on his back. Tilt him slightly onto his side towards the light so you can draw those legs up. I teach that in the back pose um, and um, a few other props as well and in my wrapping tutorials. But yeah, in terms of that, that's basically what you have to work on here. Again, the direction of that light looks like it's coming straight in. Whoops, I'll make my pen a bit bigger. The light is coming straight in. The chin is tilted towards the light, so it is creating the those little shadows that we just talked about in that previous image. So tilting that head or the chin away from that light source will bring that light down across the baby's face like that. But yeah, perspective um, is slightly off. It looks like it's just tilting down a little bit in that direction. So this is closest to the, the lens. So you just want to get over a little bit more um, so you're, you know, square on to, to that round prop to make it nice and um, even and yeah there's a few ways you can do it in post-production but you really do want to try and get it right in camera so you can use the transform tool to kind of bring that perspective up a little bit um, makes a bit of a difference but yeah that's it from me today <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. I talked about a lot of different things and I want this to be, um, I'm glad I watched this because I was wondering if there was a cloning healing brush like Lightroom provides. Do you know, patch tool, healing brush, I use both. Some, like, it depends on what it is that you're doing. I just alternate between the two of them. So depending on what it is that I'm trying to remove or fix or soften, I just go back and forth. I find I use the healing brush more for when I zoom in and I might be getting rid of little spots or um, specks of dry skin on the on the face or hands, things like that. But m majority of the time I tend to use the patch tool because I have more control over the strength. Sometimes I don't want to remove something completely, I just want to reduce its intensity. So yeah, lots of stuff going on, lots of thank yous, thank you, thanks for watching, yeah, thanks big, for joining big me. thank yous from a lot of people, and a lot of people who have actually tuned in for the first time, which is pretty Fantastic, cool. fantastic. I do enjoy doing these, we do them once a month. If you didn't get to watch the whole thing, um, you know, they stay in the group so you can come back re-watch. And we try to alternate the time that we open up submissions so that, because, you know, we've got such a large international audience, makes it easy for everyone to be able to submit it at least one time. But even if you don't get an image submitted, you learn a lot from seeing other people's work. And I mean, like that's 20 images. Uh, if I did more than that, we would be here all day, people. And I'm sure I'd lose my voice and you'd get sick of my voice, so. <laughs> but it's Friday. Um, I know a lot of you have entered the Rise Awards. Thank you so much. You're gonna get, you know, amazing feedback. Maybe not to this degree. <laughs> <laughs> because the judges will be going through a lot but the feed will you know the feedback will be invaluable they're going to talk about a lot of different things and the thing with getting feedback and critique is like I said at the beginning of this you see your image through somebody else's eyes because we are only ever as good as our last shot 
and that's what makes us continually improve and evolve and that's gonna make us better every single time we pick up our camera when yeah that's pretty much but if you don't have any shoots booked this weekend get in that studio practice shooting a loaf of bread a ball anything get that light right style some props play with all of the different textures and things that i've talked about practice changing the light um, in terms of the intensity and the direction of it and yeah once you get that right you can walk into your studio and your attention can be completely on that baby because you no longer have to worry about all those other different elements because they'll come to you like second nature so yeah, I'm going to go. Have a great weekend and I will see you all very soon. Bye.